as we are rejoined by Meathead from AmazingRibs.com. Any other lamb stuff that we want to tie up before we get into the pastrami and corned beef? Yeah, there's one more thing I should point out. Okay. Lego lamb is like um, a uh, uh, a ham or even a, a shoulder. Um, there's a number of different muscles, and there's a lot of sinew and connective tissue in there. And something that's fun to do with that is to just carve it up into chunks and use it um, um, uh, like uh, kebabs. Now, I'm not a big fan of putting things on a spear and rotating it and stuff. I hear you. Uh, I like to just take big chunks of meat and throw it on the grill and roll them around individually and pull them off individually. I'm a thermometer guy. I check all their temps so they don't overcook. But you can take lamb, leg of lamb, and cut it in, up into like two-inch chunks. Give it a good seasoning rub, your favorite, or one of the ones that I have on our website. Uh, you can use my recipes. And uh, just roll them around and get them dark on the outside and rosy in the center, and they're delicious. Um, in western New York, um, in the Binghamton area, Binghamton. they're famous wow. for speedies which is an Americanization of the word spidini, which is an Italian grilled kebab type thing. Yep. And um, um, they're, they're lamb chunks typically that have been marinated in oil and vinegar with a lot of oregano and other seasonings. And Western New York speedies are a lot of fun. Uh, I lived in Ithaca, New York for many years and uh, ate my share of speedies and uh, they're huge at the New York State Fair up in Syracuse, um, but you can make your own. And I also I have a good Speedy's recipe on our website. As we dovetail into corned beef and pastrami, anybody made lamb strami before? You know, I haven't. You I bet it'd be good. Would that be good? I bet it'd be good. Hmm. All right. Well. I've made goose pastrami, and that is wonderful. Hmm. All right, All right, let's let's let, let let's let's dive in. Let's go. Let's okay. start. Let's start with corned beef first, because I don't th right. I don't not think that people are going to have pastrami, but I think corned beef kind of rules the day as we talk about St. Patrick's. It does, and it shouldn't. <laughs> corn corned beef is a hunk of beef that has been corned, and corning is just a process of curing. And um, typically in this country. It's brisket. Uh, often it's a uh, cut called navel. Navel's kind of iffy. Uh, there's a lot of connective tissue and fat and sinew in there. Mm -hmm. um, but brisket, you know what brisket's like, most everyone out there. Um, it corns up nicely or it cures. It takes like up to a week. It has to soak in a curing liquid, a brine, with um, prog powder number one, which is a salt with a preservative which turns it pink it's the same stuff that makes hot dogs pink and uh um it's uh, uh that's what makes corned beef pink um and you can make it yourself at home i have the technique and the recipe on our website it's hugely popular and uh it's been ripped off and imitated on many websites hmm. um, um if you buy corned beef you can get your choice, usually, if you're careful. They come in packages, usually three pounds, flat or point. Yep. You know which one to buy. The point. Absolutely. The flat does make really nice, neat slices, but the point is the fattier of the two and, therefore, the more flavorful of the two. Um, sometimes they're combined. You get the point on top of the flat. And when you do, watch, because just like with a regular beef brisket, there's a very thick layer of fat between the two of them, so you're paying a lot for the fat. So inspect your package as best you can and pick whether you want nice, nice, even slices. Go for the flat. You want flavor, go for the point. If you've got a combo of the two of them, um, you're going to be getting a lot of fat. Beware of that. <laughs> now, it comes usually in a cryovac or a plastic um, envelope, and in there is the brine, the curing liquid, and often a lot of herbs and spices. But as we have proven and demonstrated, those things do not penetrate very far. It's the salt that does it. It's the salt that makes it. And usually it's very salty. 
And it's a really good idea to desalinate this piece of meat somewhat to make it better. A lot of people just throw it in boiling water. Don't boil it. Mm. Simmer it. Get the temperature of the water down to 190. You can use your meat thermometer just for this. You want little bubbles, not big bubbles. And you, when you get those big bubbles, boiling temperature, it's just going to shrink it up. It's going to form a cup. It's going to squeeze out all the moisture. And yeah, even though you're simmering it or boiling it in liquid, you can dry it out. Mm. People don't understand. When you make a stew, you can make it really dry by overcooking it or by cooking it too hard. So keep the temperature down around 190, little tiny bubbles, simmer it. It'll tenderize it. And change the water a couple of times. Um, that will pull off some of the salt. Um, it'll be much better if you do that. Now, a lot of people also throw in the meat, the carrots, the potatoes, and the cabbage all at once. That's a mistake. Mm. Throw the meat in and let it go for a while. Um, change the water a couple of times. Keep the water around 190. Bring the meat up to about 190 or 410 temperature, a couple of hours at a simmer temp. And then, just about an hour before dinner, throw in the carrots and the potatoes. They'll take a little longer than the cabbage, but don't put them in until just an hour or so before serving. That will tenderize them, but it won't turn them into mush. And then a half hour at the most before serving, throw the cabbage in there, and that also will tenderize it, flavor it, but won't turn it into mush. And those are the secrets. And I, again, I have the recipe and the technique all in detail on AmazingRibs.com. And just to be clear, when you're talking about changing out the water two or three times, you're talking about during the cooking process? Yeah, yeah. Bring it up to a simmer. Let it simmer for 30, 40 minutes. Then take out, the, take the pot, dump the water out, put some more hot water in, put it back on the simmer and let it go some more. And I'd say at least twice, it really pulls a lot of the salt out of there. You, you'll, you can see, I mean, the water gets very cloudy. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, 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 and a lot of that is uh, uh, heavily impregnated with salt. Te finish temperature wise, what are you looking at? Yeah, you're going up to about the simmer temp around right, 190. 90 whatever you're simple. simmering at, it's going to come up to that temp. It, it's going to after a while, it'll just come up to the water temp, and that's a good temp. Um, you know, I mean, it, it's like a brisket uh, in the 190 to 200 range. It's going to be just fine. All right, so that's corned beef. Then there's pastrami. Uh, so similar but very different. All right, I'm going to say something that are probably going to get half your listeners to hang up and go listen somewhere else. All right. Can't wait. Here we go. Sorry about that, Greg. That's fine. But I believe the ultimate expression of the beef brisket, which is the pectoral muscles of the steer, is not Texas brisket. It's pastrami. Wow. Look at you making a bold statement. My God. Now, a lot of pastrami you buy in the deli counter is made from the rump or the you know the, the back leg and that's very lean but the best pastrami is made from the brisket and it's first corned basically pastrami is corned beef that's been smoked but the secret is is in the rub now pastrami lovers worship katz's delicatessen in lower manhattan yep Katz has been there since the 1880s. They've been smoking brisket to make pastrami since the 1880s nonstop. Now, I know one of your sponsors is a really good Texas um, uh, brisket cook, also famous for their sausages. Southside Market since 1882. Southside Market, and yep. I love them to death. Yep. And they were founded a little before Katz's. Hmm. But... They went out of business for a period of time. So they were have not been continuously making brisket. Hmm. So I say, technically, the oldest barbecue joint in America is owned by a bunch of Southside Manhattan Jews. Cat's Deli. Look Cat's at this. Deli. Wow. And their, bris their, their pastrami is god-awful good. Um, they have they they make it right. They do it right. It's hand sliced, no machine slicing. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. This is the restaurant that um, um, uh, when when Harry met Sally 
you know, Sally faked orgasm on the camera. Uh, Billy Crystal and uh, what, what's her, what's the woman's name? Uh, uh, Meg Ryan, I think, is what you're looking for, but I don't, I don't seem to recall that scene specifically. Can you give us a, a little bit of a of a no of, I'm not. A, of a mind jog, maybe? That, Let's hear it. No, it was Rob Reiner, the other meathead, uh, directed that movie. <laughs> yeah. Meg, and, Meg uh, Ryan was the girl, right? Uh, who? Meg Ryan. That's it, Meg Ryan. Of course, Billy Crystal and Meg Ryan. They're sitting, the, and they still have a little sign over the table. This is the table they sat at, and you can eat there. Um, and 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 she fakes orgasm. And the woman in the background is looking there as an older woman looking at her going, oh, oh, oh. And she finally looks over. The waiter comes by and she says, I'll have what she's having. <laughs> that was that was Rob Reiner's mother. Really? <laughs> so, but uh, their, their, their pastrami is fantastic. And so I studied them. I'd go in there and I'd order and I'd study and I called them. I interviewed the chef. And I have the rub pretty close to the real deal. And that's the secret. Mm. And the rub recipe on AmazingRibs.com. And if you follow my technique, people all the time say it's every bit as good as Katz's or better. I call it close to Katz's pastrami. It may be the best recipe I've ever created. Mm. It may be the best recipe on AmazingRibs.com. If you like corned beef, Take it one step beyond. Use this rub, smoke it, follow my procedure, make pastrami. If you love Reuben sandwiches, which I are do. made with corned beef, I love it. Make them with pastrami. Mm. You'll go straight to heaven. Well, according to Fred Hickson on the instant chat on YouTube, the pastrami recipe on AmazingRibs.com is indeed the best recipe on AmazingRibs.com. <laughs> Fred, thank you very much. Just said it. I'll send you your check tomorrow. So, is this uh, something that needs to cure up, or can I? Just, so, it just so happens, Meathead, that I have those corned beef and those pre-packaged packages in my uh, refrigerator. So, do I have okay. to let them cure for a week or two or nope. three or what? Nope. You don't got to do a damn thing. All right. You're gonna pull them out of the cryovac. You're gonna dump out all the liquid and the spices. Throw them away. You're going to desalinate it by putting it in a pot with cold water, put it in the fridge. Yeah. You're going to change the water every couple of hours, maybe overnight. Just going to pull a little bit of the salt out. It's All too right. salty. Yeah. Then when you're ready, you're going to make up this rub. You're going to put this rub on, and you're going to throw it on your smoker. And you're just going to smoke it like you would a brisket. Take right. it up to 190, 200, in that range. Yeah. Um, or if you wish, you can go the cat's route. Um, and then you can take it up. You'd only have to take it up to about 150. You pull it out and put it in a steamer, mm. and the steamer really tenderizes it, makes it falling apart. Uh, it's your choice. If you if you smoke it and then slice it and serve it, you'll have a better bark. If you steam it, the bark will be softer, yeah. but the meat will be really fall apart tender. It's your choice. Either one will work. It is just bloody fantastic. Greg, remember when I told you how great lamb was? Yes. And yes. you it registered, but you never took action? Right. Take action on the pastrami. I will. And, and like I said, there's two sitting right up in my refrigerator right now, so it will be on top of brain. Now, as far as the steamer is concerned, is this, like, a, can I use a steaming basket like I have for my big pot? Or, or what? Like, I don't have a steamer otherwise, I guess. Yeah, you know what I do? I just take a nine by thirteen um, uh, 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 a baking pan and put a rack in it. Mm -hmm. Pour some water in the bottom, put the meat on top, oh. and put tin foil over it. Oh, okay, so easy enough. That's it. All right. I mean, if you've got one of these big bamboo Chinese steamers, that's nice. I do not. Um, depends on how much you've got. If you've got only a little three pound piece of brisket, um, it'll fit in a regular, uh, you know, um, a double boiler uh, steamer. Uh, you figure it out. All right, sandwich you wise. You don't have to though. If you want, just just put it on the smoker and take it up to 200, 203, whatever temp you like. It it'll be fantastic. All right. So, now we have the pastrami done or the corned beef. Do you prefer from a, a sandwich standpoint, a bread, is it toasted? Do we want sauerkraut? Do we want Thousand Island dressing? Do we mm -hmm. want a specific kind of yellow mustard? What are we looking at here? All right. Well, your classic traditional um, is rye bread or a marbled bread. Mm -hmm. 
um, mustard, and that's it. Now, that's what they serve it at Katz's. But if you're going to do a Reuben, you can make your Thousand Island. You can put your crowd on there. You can put some um, uh, Swiss cheese or Jarlsberg uh, and toast the bread. Make a classic Reuben. It's fantastic. I mean, really, Reuben is... I mean, maybe only peanut butter and jelly is the, a better sandwich. Yeah, I, I would even say Ruben's probably got one up on peanut I butter. And jelly. Probably one step up from peanut butter and jelly. It may be the best sandwich in the world. Yeah, and it's just fantastic. Um, now, I once was asked to do a demo, uh, not a demo. I was asked to serve food at a charity event, uh-huh. and, and and I brought my 30, 36 inch Lang, same one you've got, right? Yep. I brought my 36-inch lang. I pre, pre-cooked pre uh, most of the uh, pastrami, and I, I got those little um, tiny loaves of um, pumpernickel. Mm-hmm. They're just little squares, you know, maybe three inches by three-inch squares. I put a slice of pastrami on that, and then I made horsey sauce, uh, sour cream and horseradish and uh, a couple other goodies in there and squirted a little of that because horseradish is really good on this stuff. And I just, you know, squirted on there so it looked like a, a, a gumdrop on top. And they went nuts. Mm. I mean, I had all these, you know, mil- uh, you know, three-star chefs all around me. And th- they were backed up at my table oh. just going nuts over the pastrami on rye uh, or pastrami on uh, pumpernickel with a little horsey sauce. All right. So if you have any questions about corned beef or pastrami, or lamb, as we had talked about for the entire first segment. You head on over to AmazingRibs.com and get those recipes. If you want to see what me heads up to otherwise, uh, AmazingRibs.com. And then, of course, if you're really into it and you want even more interaction, you sign up for the Pitmasters Club, which is uh, a little less than 24 bucks. And what's the deal that you have going on right now? Yeah, you know, you, Greg, you've been so nice mentioning the Pitmaster Club. Usually every time I come on, very kind of you. Sure. Um, I forgot to promote the idea that we have a free 30-day trial. So, I mean, you've heard the Pitmaster Club mentioned by Greg and others. Just come in and sign up for the 30-day trial and check it out yourself. You get everything except the free meat thermometer that we uh, uh, te- meat, uh meat temperature guy. Wait, 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 reach it over here. We got a, a really nice big old meat temperature guide that uh, yeah. members get if yeah. you can see it on the TV monitor and. Uh, um, we have a, a monthly giveaway. A lot of um, uh, manufacturers uh, have uh, grills and smokers up to two thousand dollars worth, and you get to pick um, the good one, uh, pit barrel, Mac, um, some really good products there. And if you win the lottery, um, your chances are one out of sixteen hundred, sixteen thousand members. Yeah, but it's every month, so one out of sixteen thousand times 12 so you've got a pretty good i mean it's a heck of a lot better than the state lottery and you can win a two thousand dollar grill or smoker um you won't be eligible for that if you take the 30-day trial until you pay but um it's a, a, the, just go to amazingribs.com and click on the button that says about the pitmaster club and read about the benefits five percent of our profits uh, excuse me five percent of the revenue gross revenue goes to uh operation barbecue relief nice um, and we also support um, smokeless uh, uh, grills for third world nations through the United Nations and a few other things. So cool, cool, cool place. A lot of fun stuff there. Amazingribs.com. And on the second Tuesday of each and every month for the past 10 years or whatever it's been, uh, Meathead right here on this show. Meathead, always appreciate the time. Greg, it's always fun talking to you and the Centralites, and thank you very much, and we'll see you next month. All right, there he goes, Meathead from AmazingRid.com.